Good morning everyone, my name is Karen. I make bookish and college related videos. I think I'm going to be titling this video um, A Day in the Life of a History Major um, Part 2, but this is going to be more like 48 hours because today is inauguration day and then I also am sitting in on a grad school workshop, or not workshop, but like info session. And tomorrow I am on a student panel. I have a meeting with my history advisor as well. And so the next um, day or so is going to be a little bit busy on top of my classes. But right now it is 8.56 a.m. I have class at 10 a.m. And I, I didn't film like my morning routine because I want to film like a morning routine video later. And so I have breakfast made. I have a bagel with some butter and jelly and then some black berries in here. And this morning I also made a French vanilla latte with oat milk and it's really good. But my goal for today before class is to write up like a two minute speech on my excitement for today and the importance of today being inauguration day and Kamala Harris being the first black and South Asian woman um, to be vice president to be the first vice president woman. I completed my speech that I was giving later today and this is my outfit. Ignore the jacket, but that's what I'm wearing. Caitlin and I are headed to class. Wow, look at me vlogging on campus. The only reason why I brought my camera out is because I know nobody would be walking to class at this time. But it's 9.45, we're headed to class and we are taking social statistics, which, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So we just had our first exam the other day. So what if he already has it graded? He won't. We'll see. It's like 36 Probably not. questions per person. But most of it's multiple choice. Yes, but he looks at work. He does. Here's campus this morning. So pretty. I will check back in when I give my speech later. <laughs> so Victoria Woodhull was a leader in the women's suffrage movement and ran for president in 1872. Charlotte Pierce Bass in 1952 was the first black woman nominee for vice president. Margaret Chase Smith in 1964 was the first woman to serve in both houses of Congress. And Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman elected to Congress and then ran for president in 1972. But fast forward to today, Paula Harris becomes the first woman, the first black and South Asian woman vice president. And whether you have the same political beliefs or not, I think it's very important to know this momentous occasion. And I just wanted to say, like, don't let today be a way to take a step back to stop fighting and advocating for what's important, but let this be a sign for you to serve your communities and to fight for what you believe in. And I hope that the next hundred of elections that we get to see more black, indigenous, people of color, LGBTQ people, and women leaders elected. And we just still have a lot more work to do. And so here's a quote that I really like from Kamala Harris uh, that she said, he reads that, while I may be the first woman in office, I will not be the last because every little girl watching tonight see this is a country of possibility. So thank you all for coming out here, and I hope you all are enjoying the celebration. Well, help you, God. So help me, God. Congratulations, Mr. President. I got done with class early today, and now I'm going to go through some old yearbooks because I run the Converse History Instagram page, and I need more posts. So check out the Instagram page. My goal with these yearbooks, I have the 1980, 1985, and 1953 yearbook, 
my goal is to look through for any like memorable photos or captions that I would want to share because my goal is to always make sure that um, important history and I don't know, just different historical moments and memories were shared um, at a very accessible level and so that's why I started the Converse History page here are some of the posts that I have so I will link the Instagram down below if you want to give the Converse History page a follow I've also done some oral histories and yeah so I'm still scrolling through the 1980 yearbook and I got to the faculty section I'm gonna show you one of my current professors in the 80s and I hope he doesn't see this and if any of my classmates or like any staff members or faculty members send this to him hello this is the history department in the 80s 1980 that's my professor still that was a politics department this is the history department and this is Dr. Willis. He was a professor here at Converse, and then when he retired, he moved to work in the archives, and he passed away last year. I found a picture on the wall of this, like, flyer and it was put up around the city of Spartanburg after Converse caught on fire and I found the New York Times article about it. New York Times, 1892 and I found a little article. This is exciting. I found a total of one, two, three, four possible pictures and posts but I think I'm gonna post about the fire burning. How many years ago was that? That was 129 years ago. So I think I'll post about that tomorrow. So right now it's 2.30, I have an hour until I get to work. I'm gonna go back to my room and do some reading for my class. Hello, so it's 2.50, I have some mango cut up on a cutting board. I'm not gonna wash any more plates than I need to. Um, and I have work at 3.30 and I was like, Maybe I can get some reading done in between, but I don't think it's going to get done. But right now, I am just doing some things that I'll help me prepare for later today and tomorrow. So I ran back to my room, and now I am joining in on the Simmons University um, MLIS info session. So hang tight, and we will start shortly. Very first. Um, however, like other universities online, um, was actually um, maybe compared to some other institutions. It is about two hours later at 7.30 and I am doing some homework and it's really frustrating. <laughs> so that's what my plan is. Hopefully I can get this done within the next 40 minutes or so. It is now, let's see, 8.22 p.m. And what I'm going to do is read 40 pages of a book for class next semester and I just got done with my statistics homework and it was kind of hard but I got it. So in the spring, which is next month, I'm going to be taking a class um, on the civil rights era and it's structured, I, I think I mentioned this before on my channel, but it's structured the same way as my women in Asia and Africa class that I took my sophomore year in the spring and so it's one book a week with discussion and some lecture um and the first book that i am trying to finish up is the blood of emmett hill and i'm on chapter five and because i have this on ebook um i've just been like highlighting quotes and typing up notes that i like think of as i'm reading and so i already have a lot of notes highlighted and marked up from the first 40 pages. One quote that has been quite memorable to me um, from the first 40 pages is, what does it mean when you remember something that you know never happened? I'm going to answer this question in my essay that I have to write for this like reflection piece. Carolyn Donham was put on trial for Emmett Till's murder. And this part, this specific like page and paragraph talks about like Carolyn's part of the story 50 years later where she's like, I don't remember the full story. I can't tell you what really happened. And so the question, what does it mean when you remember something that you know never happened? In my paper, I want to write that there is a whole system 
willing to uphold lies and this for this one party which is Carolyn Donham. And I also think that this means that there are people willing to believe in lies in order to maintain supremacy. And when it comes back to bite you in the ass 50 years later again, so many years later, like did you achieve your goal of remaining in that like supremacy? You did because you got away with it. I don't know, I just have a lot of thoughts on this book already and I like it so far going into this book I was really worried about I'm really, before I go on with that, I am glad that I'm talking to a camera about this because um, I'll be able to like write all this down in my paper later, but going into this book, I was really worried about the fact that the author is a white male author talking about the murder of Emmett Till, of this young black boy that happened, that kickstarted the civil rights movement. And so I went into this thinking, what can this author, this white male author write about? what would be missing if a black author, a black historian wrote this? And he explains that the whole reason why he's writing this book is because Gar Carolyn Donham herself reached out to him because he has written a book similar to this before. I think my nose is bleeding. He's written a book similar to this before about another m murder of a young black boy. And so there's that aspect to it where he has the experience of researching and researching all about all about cases like this but it's like I don't know it's just I'm still very like weary as I'm reading this and I think that's a big skill that I have developed um, as someone studying history and I I very much appreciate it I'm not really I'm not much of a critical reader in the terms of like is this book good or bad um, based on this like rating scale but I I take the whole book into account and just think about like the author's motives for writing certain things what they probably missed out on and how this book best served me I don't like rating books um based on like a scale or anything which is weird because like I also make booktube videos and that's basically what booktube is that's all I'm really doing for the rest of the night is reading and then journaling and then going to bed by 11 p.m and so this is just but this is the end of my Wednesday session part of this video, so I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, team. It is 9.05 a.m. on January 21st, and I already did like my whole morning routine. I made some breakfast and an iced latte, but today's agenda, I have class. I have a meeting with my advisor, class again, work, and then I'm on a student panel, and then just whatever homework I have for the rest of the day. We got done with our um, morning session early, so that means I had time to come back, eat the lunch that I made this morning, and then I'll leave for my meeting with my history advisor. Um, I literally have so many notes on what I could talk about with her, but I only have like an hour to talk to her, so we'll see what I actually get done today. Caitlin and I just got done with our homework, so we don't have to do it tonight. I have the screenshot of the New York Times newspaper from when Commerce caught on fire. So that's what that looks like. And then this is the actual flyer that was posted around the city of Spartanburg um, in 1892 to try and get people to rally together and rebuild um, Wilson Hall. And so I just thought that was interesting that it was in the library and that I was, I had to do a lot of digging actually to find the New York Times newspaper. I couldn't find a local Spartanburg one from 1892, so. I realized I told the vlog that I would be meeting with my history advisor to talk about some things. Didn't really update the vlog though. Basically, I went into this little chat very like, nervous about grad school and life after college because I'm at that time like I'm at that stage where I can start thinking about that and I have been emailing her back and forth about a bunch of like internship and internship and research ideas and opportunities and basically she was like Karen you are on track with things your goal right now is to take the GRE it's to come up with an idea for your senior thesis it's just I kind of needed this meeting for her to like pull me back in and be like hey you're on the right track but here's what you can do right now or influence your decision to come here 
Um, mine was definitely the sense of community. Um, and I think all four of these women could echo that commerce is very much a community. If you are looking to just go to class and then go to your dorm or go home and no one's going to know who you are, we are not the school for you. I'm just going to tell you right now. And I was trying to decide between the two, and it was like the day before my decision was due, and I was driving to Target because where else do you go when you need to make a big decision? I like you to calm down. My roommates are arguing about eating vegetables. Nikki, do you want to say bye to the vlog with me? Yeah. Wow, thanks. KB, do you want to say bye to the vlog with me? <laughs> when did you get a camera? Um, so that is the end of my two days in the life of a history major. So I hope you all enjoyed. Please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> bye. bye.